The land of Varanasi has been the ultimate pilgrimage spot for Hindus for ages. Hindus believe that one who is graced to die on the land of Varanasi would attain salvation and freedom from the cycle of birth and rebirth. A board of Lord Shiva and Parvati, the origins of Varanasi are yet unknown. Visitors from many parts of the country visit this holy place throughout the year. There are many age-old monuments, temples, shrines in and around the city attracting people to rejuvenate by a trip that connects to their soul. The river Ganga brings the morning vibes of the most beautiful sight of the sun rising and setting at the horizon. The morning Ganga Aarti before sunrise is organized by Subha A. Banaras. It is truly mesmerizing to see the Aarti being done even as the sun rises slowly and lazily from the east. The Aarti is followed by a musical rendition by the artist of the day. Amidst the rush and chaos of the city being visited by people from all corners of the country, there stands a serene and calm old estate of the Theosophical Society welcoming all members, visitors and well-wishers to embrace with peace and harmony with its natural ambience. The Indian section of the Theosophical Society was constituted by an executive order of the President Founder Henry S. Olcott dated November 17, 1890 stating, The Indian section of the Society is formally constituted as a section for the whole of India effective from January 1, 1891. By that time, 127 lodges had already been chartered in India showing that Theosophical work was already quite strong there, mainly due to Olcott's extensive tours. The Indian section of the Theosophical Society was registered on 31st August 1903 with its headquarters at Varanasi. It is the National Society for India to carry out within its jurisdiction the objects of the Theosophical Society. The present estate of the Indian section headquarters covers about 70,000 square meters. On it stands the famous bungalow Shanti Kunj, the abode of peace, in which Dr. Annie Besant lived from March 1900 until she moved to Adyar when she became the international president in 1907. She continued to consider Varanasi her home and India her homeland till she passed away in 1933. The lush green campus of the Indian section is well maintained and kept vibrant by sincere workers. There are many air purifying plants and fragrant flowers which keep the ambience of this campus fresh and welcoming. This is also a home to many birds and insects who add vibrations to the calmness of the campus. Delegates gather in the lawn for a friendly chit chat during any convention and meeting of the Indian section. The Bhojan Shala in the campus has a well-maintained kitchen and the workers are very diligent in serving healthy vegetarian food for all delegates during the conventions and meetings. There is a proper timeliness scheduled for breakfast, lunch and dinner with tea time. The members and delegates are relaxed and they feel at home while visiting the campus. There is a serene temple of Shiva known as Shanteshwar Temple. The white Shiva Shakti as seen in this image was donated by Dr. I.K. Taimu. Linga is the symbol of potential energy of Shiva who represents the whole cosmos and Shakti or Prana is the life energy that makes possible movement in the cosmos. Shakti and Shiva symbolize energy and consciousness. Shiva is Shava or corpse without Shakti. Vedant views her as the essence of the stream of consciousness. The potential remains formless and hence Nirakar. Another activity taken up by a number of lodges in India is the Bharat Samaj started in 1920. It was initially meant to simplify the Hindu rituals. 
under the leadership of Pandit Mahadeva Shastri of the Adyar Library and Research Center, a daily puja was introduced, taking mantras from the ancient scriptures. It was publicly performed for the first time by Krishnamurti at the convention in 1925. There are Bharat Samaj temples on the TS premises at Adyar and Varanasi, and the puja is performed there daily. On certain days, it is performed regularly in several lodges and it is a common feature on some special occasions. Vasant Kanya Mahavidyale is a women's college in Varanasi admitted to the privileges of the Banaras Hindu University. It was established in 1954 by Dr. Rohit Mehta who was inspired by Dr. Annie Besant and went on to found this college for women education with the motto Education as Service. The college is run by Besant Education Fellowship and situated in the compound of the Theosophical Society at Kamacha, Varanasi. The renovated hostel in the campus is named after him as Rohit Mehta Bhavan. Annie Besant School, run by Besant Education Fellowship, was founded in 1952 as Shishu Vihar. In 2005, Shishu Vihar and Annie Besant Primary School were merged and renamed as Annie Besant School. It was upgraded in 2015. Now, the students from class prep to class 8 are getting value-based education in a beautiful ambience. The headquarter main building has the office of the President Indian Section and workstation of the staff. There is a meeting hall where members and delegates attend seminars, lectures and significant functions of the TS. This is a picture of Federation Secretaries assembled for a meeting. Members and delegates stay at Suryashram during their visit for conventions and meetings. The infrastructure is well maintained by the administration of Indian section for ensuring that the basic hygiene and ambience is maintained during their stay in the campus. Dr. A. Richardson was one of the stalwarts laying the foundations of the theosophical work. He was a very sympathetic soul and a devout worker in the cause of theosophy in general and education in particular. He was brought by Mrs. Annie Besant, specially as the principal of the Central Hindu College, founded and opened by her on July 7, 1898. The Richardson House inside the Indian Section headquarters reminds all who visit the campus of the selfless and learned workers at the caliber of Dr. Richardson and many more. According to a student of the Theosophical School who first came to live in the Indian Section headquarters in 1932, he heard a number of anecdotes and stories about the campus in the early days from his teachers and elders. It is said that one of the inner founders visited Varanasi and stayed for a while at the old Shiva temple in the campus. He bathed in the adjoining water tank whose parapets are still intact and drew drinking water from a well nearby which still exists though not noticed by many. He tied his horse to a tree which has not been identified. There is a bilva tree at the temple whose fruits are exceptionally delicious. Saplings from it are available in the TS nursery at Adyar. Mrs. Besant had the temple renovated. Later, the tank was filled up and two tennis courts were made. In late 30s, it was given shape of an amphitheater. The same was renovated and was inaugurated during the 144th International Convention held in the Indian Section campus. <laughs>